What's up? What's up? How you doing? I'm quite all right, man. Thank you for bringing me into your humble abode. This is... You're always welcome, man. It's very magical. It's very magical with the blue and everything. There's a lot of work done on here. <laughs> you. you should have seen this room before. A word? Yeah. Okay. It was just concrete walls, man. All right. So, how long have you been doing this, though? Uh, music all together? Mm-hmm. Um, first performance I actually ever did was, I think I was 15 years old, so... It's been a long time, man. Um, I, I would, I would legitimately say, a good over over thirty years now. Thirty years. Yeah, production and and writing. So. That's a long time, bro. Yeah, man. That's a long time. All right. Um, so, what was the first record you actually produced, and for who? Uh, it was actually my solo joint, uh, the Professor record. Um, I did that in '97. Okay. And I went by the first name I had. I was I went by Doo Wop, but then there was the DJ Doo Wop, right? So I had to come up with something crazy. And uh, at that time, I was young, and you know, we were chasing the women around. I called myself the Poom Poom Professor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. So so from the Poom Poom Professor. Oh my god. <laughs> yes, sir. It went it went to uh, the Professor, and then everyone just kept calling me Pro. Okay. So from there, um, yeah. That's where I got the name ProLogic. It just turned and eventually changed to the ProLogic. So, okay. But um, yeah, but it was my first record, and then I did the Beat Down Invasion in '98, which is a was a collaboration of all the artists from around here. Right. I just, I just put a flyer out saying, "Hey, you local artists, you do hip hop, R and B, reggae. Right. Hit me up." And I did a compilation, and it, okay. did, it did did really well. So, all right. So, um, <clears throat> who are some of the artists that you have worked with? Like, if you were to name me a few, just off the top of your head. Uh, Danny O. Worked with Danny O. Um, Fraction, Sharky, Lyricist, David Smith, Titus. Um, there's a there's a whole gang of words and rhymes. Okay. Um, yeah, I could keep going. <laughs> okay. But, uh, you know. Um, Extensive. There, though, there's a lot. And um, I'm not trying to drop other big bigger names, <laughs> but I mean, at the same time, I've I've done tracks myself with Chip Fu, right? Uh, you know, uh, Tough Dumpling, right? Mishy Me, Thrust, S. I have a song with Thrust. Yeah, yeah. I would join with Thrust. Don't that's worry, I keep going to rap. That's, that's, that's wicked. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's okay, man. Yeah, this, all this, all this stuff's coming, man. It's all yeah. coming next year. I'm dropping, I'm dropping the uh, opening the floodgate. So, all right. I know, I know. Producers have their own little. Every producer has that pro part of them, where, you know, where they believe. You know, they try not to sound like anybody else or whatever. But if I were to ask you, I mean, if you were to find someone when it comes to your production style, who you resonate with, if you a certain producer that that gave you that inspiration to start start doing work, cooking work like this. Uh, in the early, in the early days, a lot of people said I had a alchemist type sound, mm. but I <clears> said <throat> Lord Finesse, Pete Rock, pr Premier, like. Those type, you know, even high tech, like a lot of these guys are influential in me. But more, more recently, like uh, like Timberland, you got your Timberland, you got Scott Storch. I'd have to say is like one of the best to do it. Period. Mm. But um, that's yeah. depending on what you're going for, though. Yeah, right? yeah, so yeah, yeah. I'm saying like all of these guys are talented, right? So I, I try to just kind of like I mean, because we're Canadian, <laughs> uh, it's a little different. Because if you see who does well in, in Canadian hip hop, it's, yeah, it's like. People like Chaos who who are who are not afraid to yeah I love chaos. go go outside yeah. of the box right yeah. and and he made folk rap yeah and it was phenomenal and he's from Trinidad and Tobago too you know yeah, right? he's from our country too yeah he born and raised in our country yeah, he's that's, dope that's wicked man that's wicked yeah he's dope so yeah all right that's what I'd say and just other guys around me that would make a beast like uh, know it know it was one of them uh, a producer I used to work with uh, uh, CKL yeah. Yeah, he, uh, he he was a big influence to me, a mentor. So, uh, okay. and also Tr uh, Tris from Nefarious. Like they, they, we were all like, it was um, CKL introduced me to Tris before Nefarious was even when Nefarious was happening, but they weren't weren't out there yet. Right. And same with Know It All, uh, Know It, and I. We we used to do shows when we were younger, like with Sharky and all that. So like uh, we we had a little crew around '93. Ninth. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, 93, man, was uh, the biggest show I ever did in my life, man. Um, 
uh, had bumped into Anthony Bond, who used to run that uh, group, Simply Majestic. Okay. I don't know if you've ever heard nah. of them, they were They were kind of on like a, a rap uh, house type vibe back mm -hmm. then, because it was really weird, <laughs> like Electric Circus type days, right? Mm -hmm. um, but uh, he had us on Caravana in 93 Toronto Island, and uh, there was 30,000 people. And it was it was the biggest crowd I ever seen. I, I it was unbelievable. Um, but I remember uh, we we had taken over the a group name. Um, it was a Swing Along Gang that he had at that time. Me and this guy named Ktel. And uh, come to find out, when I was working with Danio, mm. that Danio was actually the Swing Along Gang. And when he left, is when I and uh, me and right. Kevin took over. Which was crazy because we were like talking about it. I had no idea. It's a small world, man. You know, like, but and then I ended up doing a, a bunch of remixes for uh, Danio too. You know, big up to Danio. Okay. Yeah. So, <clears throat> since you have all this wealth, all this history, because you're saying '93, mm. right? When I in '93, I was like, what, like nine years old? You know mm. what I'm saying? I was nine years old. But um, from what you could understand now from the music then to now, what do you think Canadian music is missing? In terms of quality, I don't think it's quality. I think we got the quality. I think it's funding and promotion and management. Like if half of these guys in Toronto, well, just look look at look at look at Drake's playbook. Mm -hmm. He left, yeah, and got success. You look at yeah. the Dream Warriors from back in the day. They left, got yeah. success, and came back. Yeah, you know. Um, so basically, the way I look at Canada the music industry is like I remember there was a time where the Rascals would turn down getting Junos. Because mm. it was the death of your career if you took a Juno, if you won a Juno. Yeah, because you go to the commercial because, side. Yeah, 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 because, yeah, because it was laughable. Though. It was <laughs> yeah. laughable, though, because Canada is is uh, not not the shit on the, the, the music industry. There's arts and everything here that are beautiful, but it, there's no real investment in it. Yes. You know, so. Yeah. All right. So, <clears throat> what project that you have done in your life that you think you're very passionate about? The one project that... Gives you goosebumps. Just thinking about how much times you did it, the production work, the artists, everything. What 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 project or person? Um, I would well, I'd have to do this. I'd have to say it like this. The most influential thing in my life as far as like projects I've done mm -hmm. would be the beatdown invasion. Okay. Because I work with mm -hmm. all different walks of life, man. All different people. It, it was uh, all different styles, and it was a time where all of us are coming up, we're all hungry and we all had egos. Mm. So we had to mm. kind of learn how to deal with our egos when there's a rapper who can rap beside us just as good as yeah. us, right? And yeah. that, that's, sometimes it's hard to take. It's like when a fighter sees another fighter, like, man, you're, you're the shit. I want to see, the, you know, I think I can take you out. Yeah, or, yeah. You think I, yeah, you think so, right? <laughs> so we had a lot of that going on, but we were also young and hungry, mm. and we learned a lot, and we had uh, the best experience in life, like, uh, doing that. So it was, it was great. You know? Definitely. So th th there's that one, and... Uh, one of the proudest ones I, I I kind of can say like just off the top of my head I think I mean I've done mm -hmm. I've done probably thirty records so like underground hip hop records right so um, would be Frack and Pro Frack and Pro yeah the last record we did together uh, we've got another one that's just sitting on the back burner right now that we're gonna release too mm -hmm. but the last Frack and Pro was uh, I think it was oh seven mm -hmm. and there was twenty four cuts on that record and cuts. and it was it was. I thought it was a masterpiece, man. The production, everything, the way everything came together, man. It was, it was a beautiful thing. So that's the one I would have to say was, uh, you know, I've got my solo stuff too, but it's always, for me, it's always like teamwork, man. That's, I don't know. I, I, I like that vibe. So. All right. Um, what about your, um, so as a producer, mm -hmm. what do you value in an artist first? What you, what is your scouting tool? What you look at first? Voice? Bars, flows, or a combination of everything? I would say s style. Yeah. Because overall, mm -hmm. like, I'll say it like this, and I'm not trying to offend. I, I, I've met up with freestyle guys who can freestyle their asses off and, and are phenomenal, but mm -hmm. they can't write a song to save their life, right? So when it comes to bars, I find, uh, what, what if I say, uh, too much candy is no good so now I'm closing the shop <laughs> yeah. I find with bars it gets too repetitive like I mean you've got to drop them in the sweet spots you got to find like, if you're barring it up every line it, eventually you're going to lose your pizzazz or, or whatever you want to call it like uh, you're going to lose so, your, your fire it's like 
it's, it's going to become repetitious. It's going to be expected. So what you're saying is that it's more your style, your flow, how you say things, how you do things, how witty you are when you say certain things. Your that, confidence. Yeah. Okay, so for example, look at Guru. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Guru had a dope voice. Yeah. He was a lyricist, <clears throat> don't get me wrong when I say this, mm -hmm. but he wasn't he wasn't Rakim. Nah. You know what I mean? So, nah. but he could kill a track. Like he yeah. could get his point across, he could yeah. say it, but he did it with style, he was slick, you know? So, yeah. bald head slick, rest in I, peace, man. I, I think Guru too, Guru is more, I think rappers who are more teachers mm -hmm. have a sense to not have much style to them because they, they're trying to impart so much knowledge that they don't really, they don't really, um, they don't really focus too much on how wavy they sound and how, how they could be a little more entertaining. They're more just trying to get everything out there as quick as they could, as fast as they could. Mm. So <clears throat> that was a nice answer though. Mm. Okay. So how 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 do you balance family and music, bro? How you do that? Uh, my wife would kill me for saying it, but I just roll with it. <laughs> but no, seriously, uh, I'm on a, I'm on a set schedule as far as like uh, what I can do musically. Um, like at this point in my my life, mm -hmm. tour, touring and all that type of stuff would be out of the question. Like it's hard for me to even leave the house uh, with my son. Uh, my son has a, a very severe condition. Mm -hmm. Um, which has not been diagnosed properly. They can't give him a name for it. So basically my life revolves around him mm -hmm. and um, the music is, is uh, my therapy for dealing with what I have to go through with in life. So like um, if I didn't have the music, I don't know if I could actually necessarily do what I do. Like, I'm, I'm saying like it, it recharges me. It takes me out of, out of my... Um, Hmm. My my daily life space where mm -hmm. where it's difficult at times, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, man. Um, it, 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 I I think with anybody, it's kind of like you know anything could come up at any given time. You have to kind of just roll with it, you know, go with the flow. Right. So right. that's basically it. I'm a night hawk too, man. <laughs> you know, I'm, I've I've always been, even when I had a full time job and I was doing music, I'd be up until two in the morning. Going to Toronto till four o'clock in the morning, and then come back and get, getting shit faced out in Toronto, and then have to have to get up at six thirty to be at work when I'm driving as a courier. <laughs> right? It is what it is, man. You, you know. So you were a courier before? Well, I, I, I did deliveries for coffee companies. So. Oh, so okay. So that's probably the reason why you're used to like. You know the night time. Yeah, like no, the, it's always been the music. <laughs> really? Honestly, it didn't matter what I had to do, do the next day. I'd always be like, oh, I take a nap in the afternoon, right? So, I was always, always, if there's music going on, I gotta be there. I gotta do it. I gotta try to at least make an attempt to be involved in it. All right. So, <clears throat> me being a guest in your joint or whatever it is, <laughs> I know you haven't really. Well, have you heard my music? I've heard one song, and it was a quick. Um, quick like snippet of it so i oh. can't honestly say that i've peeped your catalog mm -hmm. but it's something I, I plan on doing okay. it's just i haven't had a chance to it's the same with donnie sent me his record <laughs> I, I kind of skimmed through it there was two songs on it. i was like man yeah, that's what mm. i this guess I, I don't want to go sidetrack <laughs> but this, donnie quest man donnie quest is that dude man yeah yeah no, so, I, I have to give him that man he, but he i'm saying it. at the same time i got to go through your stuff too man um there's a lot of actual canadian artists that i like to go through it's just the problem with me is majority of the time when I have any time, mm -hmm. it's mixing, making beats, yeah. writing a rhyme, you know, right. doing some shit. So I, I just try to stay active. And I feel like even, even with my own music, when I, when I finish a record, I don't listen to it. Yeah, yeah, I think you Put it down. Time. I'm moving yeah, on to the next thing. I got to keep moving. Yeah. Right? So, time. But I will definitely uh, check your all stuff right, out. All sir. right. So, <clears throat> well, usually we tell rappers to freestyle and all these things and all these wonderful stuff. Let me see if you still got them hip hop. Oh, hip hop gears is, going. Yeah, let me see if you still have them bars going. Oh, yeah, you know? yeah, okay. This, this is, uh, <laughs> let me hear some old school. Let me hear some it's, fat and nice. It's it's an older verse, bro. All right, let it drop. Um, let it rip. Hopefully, I'll get through it. But uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> There ain't no rest for the wicked when I kick it, I get vicious galore, sounds bass pounds, you wonder how I did it, pure sickness, the wizard, this hip hop shit, I live it and I'ma give it my all, to the day I diminish, I can't stop, won't slow down, snatching crowns of all these imposters who wanna rap, now from the beginning for me, 
Kept my ass off the streets, out of sights from police. See, I was at it constantly, and shit changed. But now I want what's mine. If you stand in my way, kiss that ass goodbye. Here to show you the difference. Was natural, was imitation. Most can't rock a beat. Me there. Elimination. They don't want no confrontation, so keep your lips closed. This is just a demonstration on how we rip flows and defeat foes and those who rap but dough. Cause they ain't got the skill to fuck with the pro. No. Okay. That's it. Mm. Well, Mr. Logic, <laughs> yes. thank you very much. No worries. This was nice. This is real nice. Um, you actually gave me some Canadian history that I haven't heard before. Okay. And that was pretty dope. So Yeah, you got any more, man? I'm, I'm oh, def most definitely. I'm definitely going to um, be back here for sure. Man. Okay, cool. Definitely for sure, man. Thank you very much, brother. No worries, man. Peace. Very Thank much. you. Thank you for the interview, bro. That's no problem, man. Cheers. Peace. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that shit. That was Pro Logic, man. He's like a legend out here. Has beautiful music. Worked with a lot of top MCs here locally and also in the US as well. So stay tuned to the other segment I'm having. Maybe a rapper, maybe a producer. This is your boy Lendor. Peace.